I mean, I really feel like <sighs> we should probably have, in fact, I'm so surprised you've come back, you didn't bring something to add to the... That is true. Yeah. Maybe we should have that. Special guests, when they come on, they should bring a little something. I will. As like a little memento to put up there. That's and good. every time you come back, you can ask, oh, who brought that in? Yeah. If you Obviously, if you, if you watch the shows, you'll know who brought it <laughs> in. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome to Monday night, eight o'clock. You know the slot, that watch guy, London. And today I've got joining me, Harry Russell. Back, baby. He's back. Uh, great to have you with us. Now, um, I've asked you to bring in three watches from your collection. And I've brought in nine watches. Oh, my God. Right. Not that it's, it's showing off. I'm going <laughs> to ask you to pick one of my watch rolls and what i want to do is i want to do my collection up against yours and then we can rate each other's little three watch collection oh dear yeah dear, okay dear, dear. all right okay so basically okay. we're going to go one two three you can go eeny meeny miny mo whatever you want choose one and then we will begin i'm going to go meat of the hot dog ah, in the middle bang in the number middle two so you're going to go number two i shall put one and three aside there's, there's some crackers in here by the way okay <laughs> So what I think we will do is, I think, one at a time, I want to go up against you. It's a bit like, um, you know, you sunk my battleship yeah. um, when you play Top Trumps. Yes. So I'm going to yes. basically battle you against the watch. So I'll tell you what, I'll let you... Oh, uh, should I go? I don't well, know. now listen, we, we got, you know, oh, you told me that these watches were going to be have a story to them. Right, okay, hold on yeah. a second. I know what we should do. We should do your silly rock, paper, scissors, where you go yeah. one, two, three. One, two, but three, should bosh. We, should we go rock, paper, yeah, scissors this time, that, or are yeah. we doing one, two, three? No, let's do one, two, three, bosh. Right, ready? Yeah. One, one paper, two, three, scissors, bang, bosh. Oh. One, rock, two, paper, scissors, three, bosh. Kevin wins. Okay, so I'm going to let you go first. I'm going to let you serve. Okay. I'm going to let you serve, and then I'm going to basically... Um, Go after you. Right, so let's... Okay, so... What do you got first? All right, I'm going to go with my latest purchase. Okay. Yeah, and some would say it's rather extravagant. Okay, but I bought this last week, and it's quite a hot watch. Um, and I know I told Gav about that I was buying this one. Um, this is a Casio. Now, what okay. you actually said is, I can't believe I'm doing a Gav, <laughs> and I'm believing the hype. That's what yeah. you said to me. Yeah, so basically, I've bought a Casio, right, which is... Um, a reissue of the Casio Tron, which was the first Casio they ever made watch. The first Casio watch. It was in 1974, um, and it was the first watch, digital watch, to have a calendar. So it would tell you the date, the day, and the month. Um, and without that watch, Gav, without the Casio Tron, which is a cool name, by the way, isn't it? I mean, Tron. I mean, how you just, cool. You yeah. just needed to put yeah. Tron in there. Yeah. And I'm wondering, what year was this? 74. 74. So it was well before Tron. Well before Tron. Yeah, it was Absolutely. well before Tron. Um, so without that watch, we would not have G-Shocks, all the Casios that you've probably got in a drawer or you use to do the gardening with. Without the Casio Tron, and without it being a success... We would not have any Casio watches. So I can see why you've brought this into battle. And I can see... Now, just my first observation, because the first time I've actually handled this, which yeah. I was going to so give a little So this is a wipe. premium Casio. It's premium. Yeah. I mean, even in the Casio. So it's what, 449 yeah. 449, 449, 449. Yeah. 449. Yeah. It's a limited edition, 4,000 watches worldwide. And if you can imagine, we've got a Casio UK, a Casio USA, a Casio Canada, a Casio India. How many watches did Casio UK actually have to sell? Yeah. So I'm assuming that they decided to make this as flimsy as they did uh, some some 40 odd years, 50 odd years ago. Because first of all, my first observations, uh, it's a little bit flimsy, if it's, I'm it's, really honest. It's a little light. But that's okay. Uh, talking about, um, you know, 50 years ago, the Gerald Genta-esque kind of like looking yeah, link yeah, bracelet. The 70s, yeah. It's very, very 70s. Yeah. I'm going to say a massive observation. You have got a girl's wrist, yes, my friend. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, I I'm not sure Proud I get Proud of that, though, mate. Proud Are you? Of that. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Well, you know what I'm saying? Size is everything. <laughs> Strangely, I actually really like it. Yeah. I, and I really do. It'd probably be a little bit small on my wrist, even though um, I've got quite a small watch for me on today. I've got yeah. my friend yeah. the master banker. Um, my other one, it's beautifully shiny. That's what, Which yeah. I do like, except yeah. to say, I keep cleaning it. It's a, a smudge monkey. It's a smudge yeah, monkey. Yeah, it really is. But the thing is, 
It's not until I got into the macro shots, so I've just done a show of this, how amazingly made and the finishing of this watch is. You can't see it, but the front the front face of the lugs, this is a radial vinyl. Right. I don't know if you can even see it yeah, with, I can. with your eyes. Yeah. Um, but the fluted chapter ring, which is what was um what it's recreating, that's what yeah. it what it had. Um, so this is a, I think it's a 3542 module. It's a radio control, which is a multi-band six. It means it, it's always going to tell the accurate time. Um, it's solar powered, which is what the original didn't have. Um, and yeah, there are a couple of flaws that I see, which is obvious to see. It's, it isn't sapphire glass, it's mineral glass. Right. For £449, that's a bit of a no-no. And also it's only 50 metres of water resistance. But... I see this as a, like a dress Casio, you know? I don't see this wow, as a sport. Wow, that, is, that yeah. is stretchy. Yeah. <laughs> a dressy Casio. Or a weekender Casio. A weekender, okay. Yeah. This, is, this is your weekend. Yeah, it's my Casio. Strangely, actually, I, I do really like it. I mean, yeah, I like it I for really its simplicity. Like it. I actually love the 70s vibe. Yeah. And I think that's really, you know, obviously being a child of the 70s, yeah. to me, this just reminds me of childhood, yeah. first watches, yeah. uh, and probably, um, you know, the sort of things we, we sort Back of... Backlight's nice. It, it fades out, up, yeah. and then fades away instead yeah. of just... Shoot that. I mean, the other thing I'd say is, I obviously, 50 years later, I cannot read what there's some white <laughs> writing on there. Is that the days of the week? Or, yeah, or is it well, the no, months of the year? Well, no, that's abbreviations. So that's snooze alarms. That's alarms and, and everything. Wow, I can't read it's it. It's functions. Basically, it's functions. whatever your functions have done. Okay. So that's your first watch. I'm going to the pop Casio that down there. The Tron. Okay. So let, let me rate this, actually. Let me rate this. Because, you know, like with Top Trumps, we'd go like Superpowers 99. Yeah, yeah. I would say for style and design... And let's go out of 10. I'd probably give that a solid seven. Cool. Because I think it's not wishy-washy. It really is a bit of a statement piece. Yeah. I think if we're going for the sort of the build quality, I really feel like it's a two. <laughs> it's very, very flimsy. But that's probably what's again, <coughs> along with the style. Yeah. And overall, I would probably give this uh, a six. Yeah. A six for me. Fair a enough. Six, a six for me. Yeah. Okay. Going up against you. You sunk my battleship. You sunk it. I'm going to go with my latest watch. Oh, here we. Oh, it's a, It's the IWC. It's the isn't it? I. I'm going to go with my IWC Black Aces. Oh. There you go. You have a little look at that. Very nice. Yeah, it's very cool. Um, I, I I love IWCs from afar because you know, as you pointed out, my girly wrists. IWCs tend to be a little bit too big on my wrists. They're pilot's watches that, to start with IWCs. So it's all face. There's not a lot of um, a bezel. But um, just a, a very, very well-made. The strap is magnificent. It's um, really nice. But the, the, obviously the Pierre de Resistance Always carries this his torch within day. Is, uh, <laughs> hold on a second. My battery's gone. Oh, can you believe it? Cut. We'll come back to the Pierre de Resistance in a second when we find a... Uh, yeah. Uh, a light that works. Go. What do you, what do you think? Um, I I I like it. I really like it. I think um, I'm waiting for the butt. Yeah. I. The thing is with IWCs, they're very simple looking, and they're meant to be. Yeah. You know, because they were tool watches for a purpose. Um, the only thing is, is is that there are so many companies that make this dial, a dial like this, not a dial specific like this, because this is full loomed and everything else. Um, I'm not a massive fan of the hands being a different off-white to the dial white. If I, I think, if I'm being honest with you, yeah. that, that that kind of lets it down a little bit. Yeah. But also, yeah. if it was all fully loomed, it, what's the differentiator exactly. when, when, when you are dark? The, the only thing is it would be the two different coloured looms. You could have a C3 yes. Super Lumino and then BGW9. Um, I do love the um, the Ace card. Yeah. That is cool. Yeah. That is very cool. For me, actually, it's not just the watch. It's the fact of the history of the Black Aces, who are the basically the Red Arrows for, yeah. the, for the Americans. Yeah. Um, and I, I leaned into that when I sort of did a bit of research on the watch. I thought that was quite cool, the fact that um, they had a hand in the design of this watch, because obviously meant to be worn um, you know, by pilots. Yeah, yeah. So as they're flying at 3,000 miles an hour, um, they can just quickly see how quickly exactly. they're going to get back to put a exactly. cup of tea on. Exactly, yeah. Um, the one thing I don't like, and I find a bit uncomfortable about the watch, and I may well change, is the strap. I find that the rubber underside 
really does rub on my skin. Does it? And I get a few little sore marks. It, it um, little, little crosses. Yeah, I, wow. I get indentations on my little fat chops, um, yeah. which aren't great. Um, and I find it a bit irritable. Because what they the would be there for me. is is for um, circulation, a little bit of air coming through that you don't get the sweat. Yeah. But um, when you've got porky arms like me, what happens is it goes in and it makes indentations. On a sportsman's wrist like yourself, there's very little movement and airflow <laughs> yeah, can get yeah, through. But not enough holes in the strap for yeah. me probably. But yeah, um, yeah I mean, I, I, I really like it. Um, I just think that, that there may be possibly a lot of watches that have almost a good history themselves that you could get a watch similar. Um, the positives and the price. negatives, another one for me, is pricing point. I really wanted this watch. And yeah. it was circa sort of £6,700. Mm, and mm. I thought to myself, that feels like a lot of money for what is a reasonably basic watch, yeah. even though I really like it. Yeah. Uh, but the plus side is, is I found it on eBay and I paid £4,000. Yeah. And yeah. I feel like, for me, that was the tipping point to go, do you know what? You you cannot not have this watch yeah. now because you do love it. You've been thinking about it for a good couple of months. You were thinking about the six grand price already. Yeah, yeah. And I thought to myself, at four, now I feel like it's a no-brainer yeah. because I really do like it and I really do enjoy <laughs> yeah. it. Give give me some ratings out of out of 10 for my, uh, my top Trump watch. Well, I, uh, history for me comes into play a lot. You'll see that with the rest of my watches. Um, so that's a high, that's got to be a high seven, eight maybe a 7.5 on that. I know we're not probably not doing 0.5s. I like the strap, but I've just had an owner tell me that it's a little bit uncomfortable. So yeah. um, for a pilot's watch, it's a novelty because of the... For novelty? There we go. Cool, hello. Hold on, hold on, hold a on. A synthetic sun Let, coming. Let's just go. Let's just put some daylight on it. Da, now da, check da, it da, out. Da, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean that that that, that just you gives don't it, you don't need to cup your hands. To that, see no, that. you don't even need to cup your hands. I mean, it's that just changes. It's absolutely magnificent, isn't it? it? It looks better in the dark, doesn't it? Just and that's weird, isn't it? Because yeah. um, a lot of people say that about me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, let's hold it up to that camera there so we can see it. That's great. It even even if it's not glowy, it 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 gives the dial a little bit more doesn't color. It? it really does, yeah. and I think that's got to be worth an extra point. <laughs> like if I'm being sensible, yeah. that gives it. Yeah, you know, your backlight yeah. honestly was shocking. Yeah, <laughs> that backlight is is you know is manual. It's, it's hard, manual. Yeah, it's hard to moan it, uh, isn't it. But it's pretty damn good. Yeah, I really yeah. do like. So overall, what what do you overall? Score on my watch? Let me just give the old give the IWC a wind. Not bad, not bad. I tend hard to say. IWC is almost there's a proper workman like machinery to it when you when you wind an IWC. Um, I give a seven. A seven. A seven overall with history, design language, because IWC pretty much made this design, um, what it represents. The loom's pretty cool. And if you're going to have a pilot's watch, have a classy, yeah. glowy one. So we're seven versus six currently. Seven versus six. Seven you're in the versus lead. six. Okay. Go, Russell. What are you going to draw out for watch number two? Um, right. Watch number two, I'm going to give you a Bulliver. Aha. <laughs> Lots of history. Of yes. Now, um, so take a look at that, this beast. I'm going to tell you now, I absolutely love this. Yeah. <laughs> I absolutely love this. Yeah. It's a stunning watch. So, yeah, in the 1950s, Bulliver um, tried to get the contract for the US Navy to make watches for the US Navy divers. Um, they did, uh, they drew up the plans, they made prototypes, they didn't get the contract. And they scrapped it. But years on, decades later, a Bulliver collector came into HQ at Bulliver and said, did you know you made these? And he showed them a watch that I'm not sure that they were aware they made back in the day. So they said, cool, that's good. Do you know what we'll do? We're going we're gonna to reissue it. Relaunch it. So what they've done, they've completely copied every single spec in terms of lug width, size of the case, how the bezel works. The domed crystal. It does. Uh, it's very, yeah. very swift. It's very, it's very, um, it's very Blancpain. Yeah. So back in the day in the 50s, Blancpain was the go-to dive watch yeah. to start with for the military. So it's obvious that they would take that that thing. Um, the only, the only, back in the days, um, we're talking last year, two years ago, when this came out, it was about £850. Now, 
it's a very nice watch, but it had a Myo it's got a Myota 8000 yep. series in it. So it's a little bit um, of a, a, a budget movement yep. for the for, for how much they were charging. They've come down in price now to about four five hundred pounds, and they've dropped the price. Yeah, the, the price has come down. Interesting. Yeah, everybody else is putting the prices up in the world. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Guess they've got to shift them. Exactly. Um, so the only way to turn, uh, hang on, hang on. The only way to turn the bezel, yeah, push it in and twist. Aha. Uh -huh. Let's yeah. have a little. No, there's not going to be any. There's no ratchet, so you push oh. it in, twist, and let go, and then it's and it sticks. Oh, then it sticks, and then it sticks. I quite like that. But that is that is what yeah. they did back in the fifties. Yeah. That was their their thing. Very simple. And um, the the other thing is the case back's quite cool. It's got um. This is not to the original, um. But the actual way the case back is, it's a two part. Yeah. So the way it's um, attached is in two parts. So when it goes underwater, it gets more watertight with the with the case back construction. It's very cool. Also, because I'm going to big this up. Come on. It's also got a um, uh, a moisture detector. Now I was going to ask you that because I can see yeah. it's brown and white. Yeah. Uh, or taupe. Yeah. Taupe is the new brown. <laughs> so, so I assume. Do you that's... know what taupe is? Mole. Mole. A French mole. French word for mole. Okay. Yeah. You know what they say? Learn something every exactly, day. Exactly, yeah. I assume that that changes colour if moisture does, gets inside the does, dark. which you don't want. <laughs> and Blancpain have that as well, don't they? Blancpain, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So that's, I reckon that's pretty much where they got it from. Uh, the, on, the only other contentious part of this is the, is the lug width is 16 millimetres. Well, it's the first comment I was going to make. Yes. Yeah. I'm not going to go back to girly wrists, but that is a girly strap. Yeah. Yeah. And that's no um no diss on no on, diss no on, diss no on diss, anything. No. It's just very thin. It's a 41 thin. millimeter case. Yes, yeah, so, so the it's case size is absolutely beautiful, but yeah. the actual strap itself, having said that, um I really do like it. Yeah. It, I um, thought you would like it. It leans into military history. history. It's a it's a bit from a brand still. It's still. It's still. It's bead blasted case. Yeah, really I love this sort of satin finish yeah. on it. Yeah. Really really yeah. cool. Um, and actually, the features, the, the push in. Yeah, it's novelty. It's, a, yeah. it's something different. Really, really lovely. When do you wear such a watch? Well, I, being a tennis coach, I, I'll wear that. With with the Myota movement inside it, I'll wear it playing yeah. tennis. I'm, I'm happy doing that. Yeah. Playing tennis. And you and this is a watch, obviously, you've kept since you bought it, because I know yes, you keep yes. a lot of watches, and sometimes yeah. you sort of dispose yeah. of you. Yeah. But I think that is very, very I don't very own lovely. a Bulliver, and there are many Bullivers that I don't particularly like. Right. But I love when they look back at their history. Yeah. Because all the best ones are yeah. from the 50s, 60s. I mean, you're, you're going very retro so far with your collection. Let me, yeah. give, let me give this some ratings. First of all, I think um, the overall design for me is an absolute eight. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. And eight, eight strong. That's good, you know, isn't it? I yeah. Mean, you know, to be a 10, it I would like have to that. be something ridiculous. Yeah. So I think eight. I love the domed. Um, I mean, that's a dome. Yeah, that it? really hey. is. And, and, and that to me is, is so 60s, 70s. Yeah. You know, yeah. it really is absolutely stunning. Um, it's quite legible. I love, I love. Just the way it, yeah. it's just different. It really is. I mean, great. I do love, I prefer a ratchet. Yeah. But um, it's just different. Yeah. And it's and it's a very work, good good way of a keeping a bezel in. Yeah, in situ. Yeah. The one thing for me that absolutely lets it down is definitely the uh, the strap size. Yeah. Because I feel like that's just it just makes it look a bit insignificant. Um, but having said that, aesthetically it does work with the watch. Yeah. Really. I cool. think for me it's something that I've got used to. Yeah. So the more you wear it, the more you get used to it. Yeah. Um, Overall score. I'm going to give, go down the middle. I'm going to give this a seven because I'd probably do the strap at a five. Yeah, okay. And probably even a four. Yeah, yeah. And, but, but I do like this and I'm, and I'm going I'm to mark this as a seven. Nice. As a seven. Good, good. As a dive watch, I'm going to put up a dive watch against you. Here we go. Here we go. Let's put a dive watch up against you. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to go with a classic. Classic. A special classic. Here we go. I'm going to go with a <clears throat> Rolex Submariner. Cool Hulk. Oh yeah, yeah. What do you think of that baby? It's 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 an icon, isn't it? Absolute icon. Iconic, in every sense of the word. Yeah. yeah. Discontinued, and also it was my first Rolex. Yeah. Because prior to the age of fifty, I had no interest in buying a Rolex watch. Yeah. Yeah. To me, growing up, a Rolex watch was something your dad had. Yeah. And it yeah. wasn't until yeah. I realised that actually I'd reached that age that I maybe started to. <laughs> get interested in 
a Rolex. I yeah. Everybody had them. All my friends had them. Yeah. And my first Rolex, I always wanted to sort of be a Submariner. And I always wanted it to be a Hulk. I love green. Mm. I love green on a watch. And this had just... I bought this watch and eight weeks later it got discontinued. Wow. Well, that is um, cool, isn't it? I was very lucky because a friend of mine actually picked this up for me in the States. Yeah. And said... Yeah, because you'd still be waiting for it. I would... The, I would, I would, I would yeah, I, I would never be getting one. <laughs> so actually, a friend of mine who has a Hulk was in the States and he walked past the store... Um, back in 2019, and they happened to have one, and he gave me a quick call, and he picked it up for me. So I did, I did get it at, at list. Cool. And and I I wear it rarely. Yeah. I wear it because it feels special to me. I don't wear it as an everyday beater. Yeah. Yeah. Um, even though really a submariner should be something that's on your wrist, but I absolutely love it. And um, the history. Yeah. A submariner. Yeah. Yep, yeah, 1953, first one that came out. Um, I, I'm not a fan of the maxi case. Yep. Um, just because um, I know what, you know, Rolex have been trying to do all these years is to make it a little bit more um, seen from far away. Um, uh, at, Rolex has become a little bit showy for me. Um, so the green is a bit too showy. I absolutely love it. And green. When I think of look Ro at it in the light. When I think of Rolex, I think of green. Yes, of I course. think of this green um, because that's what I've been brought up to think with uh, Wimbledon and and everything else. It's an absolutely gorgeous dial. Um, yeah, I'm I'm just more of a fan of 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 the less showy, uh, a more subtle uh, Rolex. But I absolutely. It's very hard to um to knock a Submariner. Isn't You're doing it? your best to do it though. Yeah, I don't like a date. I don't like a date, and I definitely don't like a Cyclops. Excellent. That, and they're all the things on that watch I do like. Yeah, exactly. Because actually, as you know, I'm after a no-date sub to sort of complete yes. sort of the, the Submariner yeah. for me because I figure a no-date and a date is great. Yeah. And actually, I still feel like with the Cyclops, it makes it a little bit iconic uh, for yes. me. It's part of the aesthetics of it. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, the Mercedes hand. Uh, Mercedes the, hands. Yeah, just yeah. I just feel like lovely it's, bezel it's, action. If I was going to have a Submariner, it was always going to be a Hulk for me. Um, That's cool in the green. Solid, not sure solid. Go, not as sure I'd go diving in it though, which is a shame. Yeah, I'm not sure yeah. I'm going to wear it in the swimming pool or the bath. No, 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 no. <laughs> but I love it. Yeah, I yeah. love it, and it's yeah. great to be. At. What about the bezel action? Yeah, because I, I be honest. Yeah, I I much prefer a sixty click. Okay. I do like it. It's very nice. It's 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 not too um, light. It's not too tight. Oh, yeah. It's very nice. It's no very back smooth, play. Isn't it? It's so smooth. I do prefer my Black Bay Fifty Eight bezel action to a to a um, your Pelagos. Yeah, absolutely love that. Um, very nice though. It just you know, Omega could only dream of having a bezel like absolutely. that. Absolutely. How would you rate this, Russell? I I would rate this. It's got to be. It's got to be up there for me. I mean, it's one of the quintessential dive watches to own. The only thing for me I that mean, lets it is it down, iconic. It's iconic. It's iconic. It's, it's hugely iconic. The only thing that lets it down for me, my personal yep. taste, is the fact it's green. I'd like it black. That's that's it. And I don't like the date. But that's just my personal taste. It would get an eight an for eight. me, and that is a high, high score overall. Perfect. I'm not sure it can get better than that, Gav. So we're. Eight apiece. Eight apiece. Did you give that a seven? Did I give it a seven? I thought I, I gave it an eight. Seven. I think you're in the lead okay. twice. Okay. Two so points. Two points up on two you points up, overall. Mate. Okay. Let's go for your third and your final. On the wrist. On the okay. wrist. Yeah, yes, of on course. the wrist. So I'm going to go for a brand that I absolutely love. Um, they're a brand that don't, not many people know about called Vertex. Yep. Okay, you know about Vertex. I do indeed. Because of, of me, probably. Yeah, absolutely. Then, uh, everything else. If I watch um, your videos, I know all about exactly, Vertex. Exactly, exactly. Um, so this watch was first commissioned by the Ministry of Defence, British Come Ministry of Defence, yeah. in uh, 1945. And it's a uh, mono-pusher chronograph. Um, it was for the bomb disposal experts in 1945. Um, uh, unfortunately, but fortunately as well, uh, World War II ended. So the watch never got made. But the drawings were up. The, 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 it was commissioned. It was ready to go. But in 19, in 20, I think it was 2017, 2018, Don Cochrane, who, who owns Vertex now, brought it back to life. This is the MP45 
Mono Pusher Chronograph. And how much is this watch? This is, uh, uh, well, it's limited to only 50, this one, right. because they slightly vintage the um, the patina. It's around 3,000, 3,400 pounds. Very, very good. But um, if you buy a Vertex, no stone, stone is left unturned. Um, in terms of the quality of the build. In terms of the quality of the build. You know, I know brands that this watch is made in and that the factories and what makes other brands, you know what I mean? There are other brands that you would be very surprised that are made by the same. It's quite weighty, actually. It's weighty. It's weighty. weighty. So first observations on the watch. I really like the strap. Yeah, FKM. It, yeah, it's really got a lovely feel to it. And also I can see it's interchangeable. Um, Absolutely. Like a, with an easy push. Yeah, yeah. Glass case back. Glass case back, showing a, always a very, beautiful very nice. decorated really nice. manual rind. The one yeah. thing I'm not so sure about is the numerals have been cut off to allow, to allow. So the two, the four, the eight, and the 10 are literally, and we'll do some close-ups of that, are literally cut off. So, yeah. I mean, of course, we all know what the time is by where the hands are. Yeah. Uh, it's an, it's so a I, I'm not sure if I think that's really cool and quirky <laughs> or whether I think that's a, a blunder. Yeah. But I'll go with really cool and quirky. Yeah, I think, cool. yeah, I think I, yeah. Get the light. Can you get your torch out? Get your torch Got out. Got your torch out. Okay, let's give it one of the, oh, what? I mean, that. keep that on there for a bit. I mean, this is solid blocks of. Is that like burning the sun? C3. That, I mean, that is pretty special. Very, very nice. Yeah. I mean, you're not going to struggle to see that, are you, underwater? No. no. Or in the air, or <laughs> wherever you are in life. But, I mean, how easy is a mono pusher chronograph? Yes. Just one well, button. One button and simply done. And actually, yeah, off we yeah. go. Um, one button to stop, one button to reset. Yeah. Very, very nice. Yeah. No, and also, it's very, very, on the dial, certainly, very, very symmetrical, which I do like. Yeah. And I do like chronographs. I yes. do feel like when I look through my collection, um, <laughs> the two I have pulled out aren't chronographs. <laughs> You have to wait to see the third yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, but I do have a lot of chronographs within the collection, and that's really and it sits really nicely on the wrist really as well. Really well. Sits. So even that. I mean, what size is that? Uh, it's forty-one. 40? It's so forty-one. 40, I think it's forty. Might yeah, be forty. Yeah, really sits really really yeah. nicely. I, I could actually see that in my um. Well, obviously, I'd have to buy it off you. Personally, I thought I could see you liking yeah. it and, and wearing I, it. I really really do. I think that's a great pricing point as well. Yeah. I mean, historically, all your watches are right up there as well. Yeah. You, you've got a reason to own your watches. Yes. Rather than just going, yeah. I like that. I'm a Not only the memories and the stories that you make with them. Sure. They come with a story. Absolutely. You know? I feel like I'm a bit of a noob on that fact. I don't really lean back into the past. I just yeah. go, I like that. Yeah, I like, I'd like, yeah, I'd like yeah, to buy it. a good thing. Yeah. Good Although, thing. as I'm sort of, you know, building out a collection, I'm now starting to look at more sort of vintage, vintage yeah. pieces are on my radar. Yeah. Um, it's a, that's a natural watch yeah, enthusiast nat progression. Though. Exactly right. Exactly. I really, really like that. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to score this. First of all, I thought the first thing I touched was the strap, and it really does feel. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Versus my IWC, which I find a bit sticky. Yeah. I think that's great. It's a great size overall. Yeah. It's, it's exactly the same feeling as an Everest or yeah. a rubber B. I love the single pusher. Yeah. Absolutely stunning, and design-wise, yeah, really glass case back. I'm going to go for the quirkiness as well. I'm going to yeah. give that a nine. Oh my I am God. going to give that a nine. Like I, I, like yeah. I, I, we might have to have a chat off camera about this. <laughs> Not that you're a seller. Yeah. Um, but I got a good watch to there go up go. against. Stick it on there. I got a good watch to go up against this. Let's do it. This one, I know you're going to hate. Uh, uh. <laughs> no question. What you're going to tear this to shreds. Really? But it's Tudor. Oh, here and we go. And it's not my Pelagos 39, because I knew you'd like that. Yeah, one, you see? this is a carbon so, fibre, is it? So it is. I have brought you uh, my Tudor Red Bull Alinghi, because I love this watch, and I just know look you won't. Look at the strap. Look what you've done. Look at that, though. Well, well, you know, hey. tear it apart, sunshine. Off you go. Wow. There we go. Yeah. Well, um, I, I have handled one of these um, before. Um, uh, very cool-looking watch. And that's what it is. Yeah, it's very cool. I love it. I mean, put it on your wrist. Yeah. And just see how stupid it looks on you. I'll just turn this around. I'm not a massive fan of the bezel action, but it's so tight. It's yeah. so smooth. It's very nice. Um, but yeah, I mean, on my stupid little wrist, it's, um, this is the only thing, isn't it? This fiddly. Uh, uh, well, and that's the only <sighs> thing for me as well, really, yeah. 
is it's a little bit of a nightmare to get on and off. Obviously, you can get aftermarket. Yeah. Whatever I, you although want. I'm not one for changing much. I don't like. I've I've recently I've decided if it was designed and that's how with I thought. That's how it should look. That's how I feel. I've become more like that. I don't want to start about the moon swatches, but everybody's changing their straps and their moon swatches, and I'm just keeping it to the original yeah. because I just yeah. feel like yeah. that's how yeah. it came and that's how yeah. it's designed. It doesn't look terrible on you, by the way. No, no. I it, mean, it's definitely They look big. nice and flat. Yeah. It looks nice and flat. Yeah. And people like, it doesn't matter what size your wrist are, people like a big watch, and that's that's absolutely fine. Well, it's fashion, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, it's on trend. If you yeah. went back to the 70s and 80s, they were all much, much smaller, and now we're just getting... Exactly. Although we are heading back down the smooth, Yeah, the well, the, the amazing thing is, is my Tudor Black Bay 58 has got a movement that is 26 millimetres in diameter. Yeah. It's a 39 millimetre case. You imagine that just rattling, rattling around, around in a 45 millimetre case. Yeah, um, yeah I mean, I, I do like it. I do like it. I don't like the... Um, I don't like the Red Bull on it. Because that reminds me of the old days when I used to have Red Bull and vodka. And just could not sleep in the night time when I went, came home from a club. Um, That's an interesting one. I wonder if Red Bull are aware that everybody reminds them of oh their hangovers God, yeah. and, and, and everything else. Because when I think of that, I think sports, technology, yeah. daring, innovation. Or dirt box racing. Yeah, or dirt yeah. box racing. Yeah. I, I mean, and I, and I love that about the brand. So every part of that watch leans into the Alinghi yacht. It's made from the same, that's made of the sails, that's yeah. the carbon fiber yeah. from the boat. Everything leans into the design and the aesthetics, which is why I love it. Yeah. And also, I saw it without the chronograph and with, and for me, it was always going to be with the chronograph. Always going to have the chronograph, yeah. yeah and I really yeah. like that. I had a funny feeling you won't rate this one so highly because your face has turned, <laughs> your frown's gone upside down, and you're really well, sort of, I, you're sort of, mm. you, I never like a chronograph with a date. But the it's very you like your symmetrical. Well, so and look at this. How symmetrical is that watch? Yeah. And how subtle is the date? In all seriousness, it is, it is subtle. It is subtle, and the facets into the um into the date wheels nice. Um, it's a it's a it's definitely a Pelagos snowflake handset with the with the indices as well. I don't like that chapter ring with red ball on it. I got to admit. Um, but this is a almost almost tilt was on the on the gimmicky side to me but um i i do like the bezel insert um which looks uh i don't know what that is it could be a ceramic mat or it could be a, a an aluminium i love the pushers the pushers are great the crown's great great um and the feeling of the bezel that is fantastic. Four thousand two hundred pounds had a price rise the week after i bought it i think or, or tudor did so yeah yeah. I think as a pricing point, I'm quite happy with it as yeah, well as part yeah. of my collection. The only thing I would say with Velcro, I know, is look at that. I know my straps literally. And by the way, I've only had this for like I know. three, four months, and you don't wear it four months. A long. Do you wear it quite a lot? Uh, no, I, to be fair, I do. I, yeah. What happens with me in my collection is I buy a new watch and then it's on my wrist for the next four or five weeks until yeah. I buy another watch. Until you get another and one, yeah. it, And then it gets retired <laughs> to a watch roll. Yeah. The people yeah. that are making the money out of me. Our mirage <laughs> and the watch rolls. <laughs> so I just seem to be accumulating them. Yeah. Um, what, what? How would you score that, Russell? Um, well, like you know, I love Tudor. I love Tudor. Um, Pelagos are always a little bit too big for me, um, uh, and it's a little bit gimmicky, but I still like it. I will give that a six point five seven. Six point five seven. Yeah, I'll give that Excellent. a six point five seven. So if I was to give my top top three Tudors, yeah. it wouldn't be in there. It wouldn't be in yeah. the top five, you know? Yeah. But correct. nice. Okay. Really nice. A 6.57. 6.57. You've made the maths very difficult. Now. Seven. Let's say Let's seven. Let's round it up to a seven. So we've got, um, we. I, I rated you as a nine, didn't I, there? You did, yeah. Uh, a nine versus a seven. I was two points ahead. So funnily enough, I think we've come out <laughs> as a draw. How, ter how terribly yeah. contrived is that? Wow. Uh, but guys, what do you think uh, of our six watches? We'd love to hear in your comments about each individual one. Did you like them? Did you not like them? Drop us a comment below and, uh, and we'll have a little read. Welcome back, everybody. Russell, while I've got you here, I, yeah. I, as I do when I know you're coming, I put the call out to all our friendly faces on Instagram and I say, hey, Anybody got any questions for Russell? <laughs> so um, we've got a few in. So this is from Scott Casey underscore F8 underscore. Scott. Russell, where do you think Citizen will be in 10 years' time? Cool. Where do I think they will be? That is a, that's, a, that's a difficult one. That is hard. Um, I think they'll be the same. They'll be in the same place. 
um, Citizen offer a lot of watches that watch enthusiasts don't like. Um, they are more for, they're a brand that caters for both. So you've got people that have come off the street and just want a very reliable watch um, and they'll buy a Citizen. There'll be people that come off the street that get taken in by all this, wow, that looks complicated, I've got to have that watch. Citizen, Citizen are a brand that are able to make a complicated watch for me look quite boring. <laughs> Do you own any system watches? I do not. I do not. I own one. Yes, I own one. I own a diver. You own a diver. Yeah. Okay. So there but, you go. But, you know, they're, they're, they'll be fine. Yeah. They'll and be fine in the same be, place. They'll be fine. Next question is from um, Artisan Curation. What do you think of the Hamilton June watch release? Very cool. I think it's an excuse to make a, a cool design. Um it's from June. You've just seen June. I have. I've seen. Oh, June two. June two. June two. Yeah, I saw June yeah. one. Yeah. Oh, go and see two. Yeah. It's go and see actually two. different basis. Because it took a long. It got. Yeah, it took it, a long to time get to get going. Yeah, you know yeah. that. that but film. I actually thought as a cast. Yeah. I actually thought as a cast they were great. Cool. Everybody really pulled together. Yeah. Uh, and I think they're the stars of, well, they're the stars of now, but also the stars of tomorrow. Willy I Wonka, think, isn't it? Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah, there's a bit more than Willy Wonka going on. Yeah. There's Elvis as well. Yeah. yeah. And you've got Zidania. Yeah. Zidania. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah. yes. And she's Spider-Man and all sorts. Yeah. Um, interestingly, um, the watch was made by, or designed by one of their prop masters from the show, from cool. the set, from the film. Cool. So... Yeah, I don't think the watch was ever in the movie. No. Um, which... Two and a half thousand pounds-ish in price. Yeah, it's a Ventura. And for me, yeah, it looks a bit too Star Trek. Yeah, it is yeah. That, it's that shape of the Star Trek logo, isn't it? Yeah, it's a Men in Black. Men in Black did the did the Ventura watch for Hamilton as well. Yeah. So they, they had it. I really like that in the 90s. Mm. I wouldn't own one. No. But I love it because Elvis... And, and, you, and you, you... Yeah, I was going to say, you've got Hamilton's, haven't you? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's, a, it's actually a brand with a massive history. Amazing. And they're probably the biggest film watch brand yeah, yeah you know josh benson photos asks can i have a discount on a t-shirt cheeky josh bugger. benson who jo oh yeah um of course he can yeah what <laughs> josh what t-shirt do you actually want yeah tell me what one you want josh mark bowman uh, 75 asks favorite holiday destination and which watch would you take favorite holiday destination us i do love the us um the destination that i haven't been to yet i want to do the West Coast, all the ah. West Coast. Yeah, but I want to go Vegas and do all that thing, um, you know, in I, a car. I, I don't upset you. Oh, mate, what? I'm going next week. Yeah, yeah, shut yeah up. Sorry about shut that. Shut up. Sorry about that. Um, um, but I, I love America. I love Miami. I love Florida. I love all that type of um, places. Yeah, it would be a US on the coast. Can I tell you? Yeah. I really like you. Yeah. You know that. Yeah. We have quite a lot in common. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what would be a great trip for us to do? What? Disney World. Oh, man. Universal Studios. We should do a trip to Universal Studios. Do you think Studios. Spencer would... Um, pass us off for yeah, doing pass that? pass us off. And if he doesn't... got to be a watch in there somewhere, isn't there? If he doesn't, <laughs> we'll just go anyway. What do you think about that for a trip? Oh, I mate. think that would be incredible. That would be unbelievable. It's like... Um, what was that film? B Bill and Ted. Yes. Bill and Ted. It'd be... Yeah. Yeah. Russ and Gabs. Russ and Gav's yeah. Disney Adventures. Disney Adventures. <laughs> I love that. Amazing. Uh, Botham Buana says, um, thoughts on the 326.30.40.50.11.011 Omega, please. Now, another reason I knew yeah. you were going to look at me and go, yeah. I have no idea what that is. Here we go. So I actually cut the picture for you. Right. Okay. okay? And it's going to pop up right there. There, yeah. Right there. Okay. What's a Speedmaster doing red? That's what I want to know. Um, I would say it's a no-no. It's an absolute no-no. There's a no, new white one that's just... just well, got announced Yeah, yeah got announced a couple yeah. of weeks ago. Um, I saw that. In fact, it was uh, released on a sneaky little photo yes. by Daniel Craig yes. last year. Yeah. And now, yeah, it's uh, apparently it's coming out. But there's all sorts of stipulations or the, 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 uh, the rumour mills are mm. rumbling about how you're going to get your hands on yeah. this. Um, the watch world seems to be very, very good at sort of... Uh, making these rules and yeah, putting them out like into you, the universe. You have to have a, a, a buying history or... But not just a buying history. You have to have a buying history of a Speedmaster and another Omega watch. Yeah. 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 Artisan Curation asks, is there a watch brand you thought, uh, you once thought, meh, and now like? That's, a, that's interesting, isn't mm. it? A very interesting. Um, for me, probably Doxas. 
I do love Doxa now. I really do love them. And you didn't once upon a time? I know. I thought they were quite garish. Why are they orange? You know what I mean? That's when I first got into the hobby. Um, but then I realised the, the Jacques Cousteau history and, you know, the fact that it was designed by him with Doxa and the Tonneau case. And I didn't like that to start with, but I absolutely want one now. A 300T. The 300T. Yeah. Is that next on your shopping list? It's got to be up there. It's got to be up there. Yeah. For me, actually, a watch I once thought was meh, and now I really quite like. You ready for this? This is so embarrassing. What? It's Rolex. <laughs> my entire life, yeah. I have gone, why would you own a Rolex? Yeah, yeah. Meh. I'm yeah. never having one. It's the sort of thing my dad would wear, even yeah. though my dad doesn't wear watches. It's the sort of thing an old person will wear. And it's only when I realise... <laughs> that I was old or older, yeah. or let's just say wiser, yeah. that I actually wanted to, uh, yeah, to own a Rolex, so. Any, any, any one. Well, it was or... a Submariner to yeah. start with, and then, you know, it's like anything, you go down the rabbit hole, and you, I didn't realize actually how much my taste in watches would change over the years. Yeah, yeah. And as a, someone who collects and has collected for, you know, since I was a kid, mm. I can see that. I can yeah. see, you know, my taste changing as I've gone through different periods of my life and yeah. different sizes yeah. and, I'll uh, be interested to see what's coming next. Yeah. So if you have any questions you want to ask Russell the Mad Watch Collector, next time we pop up the little box on Instagram, pop your question in there and we'll ask the Mad Watch Collector. So guys, thanks for joining us once again on a Monday evening. We hope you're enjoying the content. But uh, until next time, um, if you haven't dealt with us yet, it is only a matter of time. See you soon.